5.0 Introduction Scroll to begin. Incomplete 5.0.1 Welcome. Incomplete 5.0.1.1 Chapter 5 Networking Concepts 5.0.1.1 Chapter 5 Networking Concepts Computer networks allow users to share resources and to communicate. Can you imagine a world without emails, online newspapers, blogs, websites, and the other services offered by the Internet? Internet Networks also allow users to share resources such as printers, applications, files, directories, and storage drives. This chapter provides an overview of network principles, standards, and purposes. IT professionals must be familiar with networking concepts to meet the expectations and needs of customers and network users. You will learn the basics of network design and how devices on the network impact the flow of data. These devices include hubs, switches, access points, routers, and firewalls. Different internet connection types such as DSL, cable, cellular, and satellite are also covered. You will learn about the four layers of the TCP IP model and the functions and protocols associated with each layer. You will also learn about many wireless networks and protocols. This includes IEEE 802.11 wireless LAN protocols, wireless protocols for close proximity like frequency identification, RFID, near-field communication, NFC, and smart home protocol standards like ZigBee and Z-Wave. This knowledge will help you successfully design, implement, and troubleshoot networks. The chapter concludes with discussions on network cable types, twisted pair, fiber optic, and coaxial. You will learn how each type of cable is constructed, how they carry data signals, and appropriate use cases for each. It is important to not only learn about computer network operation and components, but also to build hands-on skills. In this chapter, you will build and to test a straight-through unshielded twisted pair UTP Ethernet network cable. Home. Next. 5.1 Network Components and Types. Scroll to begin. Incomplete 5.1.1 Types of Networks. Complete 5.1.1.1 Network Icons 5.1.1.1 Network Icons Networks are systems that are formed by links. Computer networks connect devices and users to one another. A variety of networking icons are used to represent different parts of a computer network. Host Devices the network devices that people are most familiar with are called end devices or host devices, as shown in the figure. They are called end devices because they are at the end or edge of a network. They are also called host devices because they typically host network applications, such as web browsers and email clients, that use the network to provide services to the user. Intermediary Devices Computer networks contain many devices that exist in between the host devices. These intermediary devices ensure that data flows from one host device to another host device. The most common intermediary devices are shown in the figure. Switch connects multiple devices to the network. Router forwards traffic between networks. Wireless router connects multiple wireless devices to the network and may include a switch to connect wired hosts. 
Access Point, AP, connects to a wireless router and is used to extend the reach of a wireless network. Modem, connects a home or small office to the Internet. Network Media Communication across a network is carried on a medium. The medium provides the channel over which the message travels from source to destination. The plural for medium is media. The icons in the next figure represent different types of network media. Local area network, LANs, wide area networks, WANs, and wireless networks are discussed further in this topic. The cloud is typically used in network topologies to represent connections to the Internet. The Internet is often the medium for communications between one network and another network. Incomplete 5.1.1.2 Network Topologies and Description 5.1.1.2 Network Topologies and Description Slideshow Select the next button to progress. Select each network type for more information and an example topology. PAN A personal area network, PAN, is a network that connects devices such as mice, keyboards, printers, smartphones, and tablets within the range of an individual person. These devices are most often connected with Bluetooth technology. Bluetooth is a wireless technology that enables devices to communicate over short distances. LAN Traditionally, a local area network, LAN, is defined as a network that connects devices using wire cables in a small geographical area. However, the distinguishing characteristic for LANs today is that they are typically owned by an individual, such as in a home or small business, or wholly managed by an IT department, such as in a school or corporation. VLAN Virtual LANs, VLANs, allow an administrator to segment the ports on a single switch as if it were multiple switches. This provides more efficient forwarding of data by isolating traffic to only those ports where it is required. VLANs also allow end devices to be grouped together for administrative purposes. In the diagram, VLAN2 creates a virtual LAN for IT's computers, even on different floors, and can have different network permissions set than the other VLANs. LAN a wireless LAN, WLAN, is similar to a LAN but wirelessly connects users and devices in a small geographical area instead of using a wired connection. A WLAN uses radio waves to transmit data between wireless devices. WMN A wireless mesh network, WMN, uses multiple access points to extend the WLAN. The topology shows a wireless router. The two wireless APs extend the reach of the WLAN within the home. Similarly, business and municipalities can use WMNs to quickly add new areas of coverage. Man. A metropolitan area network, MAN, is a network that spans across a large campus or a city. The network consists of various buildings connected through wireless or fiber optic media. 1. A wide area network, 1, connects multiple networks that are in geographically separated locations. Individuals and organizations contract for one access from a service provider. Your service provider for your home or mobile device connects you to the largest WAN, the Internet. In the figure, the Tokyo and Moscow networks are connected through the Internet. VPN A virtual private network VPN is used to securely connect to another network over an insecure network, such as the Internet. The most common type of VPN is used by teleworkers to access a corporate private network. Teleworkers are network users that are off-site or remote.
In the figure, the fat links between Teleworker 1 and the router at the company headquarters represent a VPN connection. Connection Incomplete 5.1.1.3 Check your understanding, types of networks. 5.1.1.3 Check your understanding, types of networks. This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answer, select the Submit button. Match the network type to the definition. 1. Man. Pan. Lan. VPN. Lan. WMN. VLAN. A network that spans across a city. Typically uses wire cable to connect devices to a switch in a small geographical area. Allows users to securely connect to another network across unsecure networks. Can extend beyond traditional LANs and group users based on administratively defined boundaries instead of physical boundaries. Wireless APs connect together to extend the reach of a wireless network. Connects devices in close proximity to the user, usually using Bluetooth. Connects networks across large geographical distance, such as the Internet. A LAN that wirelessly connects devices on the network. Submit. Show feedback. Incomplete 5.1.1.4 VLANs. 5.1.1.4 VLANs. Virtual LANs, VLANs, provide segmentation and organizational flexibility in a switched network. A group of devices within a VLAN communicate as if each device was attached to the same switch. VLANs are based on logical connections instead of physical connections. An administrator can segment VLANs based on factors such as function, team, or application without regard for the physical location of the users or devices. In the figure, for example, a faculty member computer, PC1, is connected to S2 on VLAN 10. PC1 could communicate with another faculty member using PC4 connected to S3. Notice how both hosts are configured on network address 192.168.10.0/24. VLAN topology example. By default, all switch ports are assigned to VLAN1. However, you can assign the PCs to different VLANs by configuring their interconnecting port. For example, Figure 2 displays a sample configuration of Switch S2.
Notice that we first create the VLANs and assign them names. This makes it easier to work with the VLANs. Next, we configure the ports connecting to the PCs to the corresponding VLANs. S2, config. VLANs help reduce excessive Once the VLAN information is configured on the other switches, the faculty member using PC1 would be able to communicate with PC4 because they are on the same VLANs. If the faculty member wanted to send something to PC5 which is assigned to VLAN30, then the services of a router would be required. VLANs help reduce excessive broadcast traffic and implement access and security policies between groups of users. Incomplete 5.1.2 Internet Connection Types Incomplete 5.1.2.1 Brief History of Connection Technologies 5.1.2.1 Brief History of Connection Technologies in the 1990s, internet speeds were slow compared to today, which now has the bandwidth to transmit voice and video, as well as data. A dial-up connection requires either an internal modem installed in the computer or an external modem connected by USB. The modem dial-up port is connected to a phone socket using an RJ11 connector. Once the modem is physically installed, it must be connected to one of the computer's software COM ports. The modem must also be configured with local dialing properties such as the prefix for an outside line and the area code. Analog Telephone Analog telephone internet access can transmit data over standard voice telephone lines. This type of service uses an analog modem to place a telephone call to another modem at a remote site. This method of connection is known as dial-up. Integrated Services Digital Network Integrated Services Digital Network ISDN uses multiple channels and can carry different types of services, therefore, it is considered a type of broadband. Broadband ISDN is a standard that uses multiple channels to send voice, video, and data over normal telephone wires. ISDN bandwidth is larger than traditional dial-up. Dial-up Broadband Broadband uses different frequencies to send multiple signals over the same medium. For example, the coaxial cables used to bring cable television to your home can carry computer network transmissions at the same time as hundreds of TV channels. Your cell phone can receive voice calls while also using a web browser. Some common broadband network connections include cable, digital subscriber line, DSL, ISDN, satellite, and cellular. A tabbed content container. Content can be text, graphic, or both. Select each tab for broadband equipment examples. Satellite receiver. DSL modem. Cable modem Satellite receiver DSL modem Cable modem Incomplete 5.1.2.2 DSL, cable, and fiber 5.1.2.2 DSL, cable, and fiber both DSL and cable use a modem to connect to the Internet through an Internet Service Provider, ISP, as shown in the figure. 
A DSL modem connects a user's network directly to the digital infrastructure of the phone company. A cable modem connects the user's network to a cable service provider. DSL DSL is an always-on service, which means that there is no need to dial up each time you want to connect to the Internet. Voice and data signals are carried on different frequencies on the copper telephone wires. A filter prevents DSL signals from interfering with phone signals. Very high-speed DSL, VDSL, attains much higher bit rates than DSL. A symmetric link can carry as much as 26 megabits per second in both directions, while an asymmetric link can carry as much as 52 megabits per second download and 6 megabits per second upload. VDSL2 can carry as much as 100 megabits per second in both directions. Cable A cable internet connection does not use telephone lines. Cable uses coaxial cable lines originally designed to carry cable television. A cable modem connects your computer to the cable company. You can plug your computer directly into the cable modem. However, connecting a routing device to the modem allows multiple computers to share the connection to the Internet. Fiber Fiber optic cables are made of glass or plastic and use light to transmit data. They have a very high bandwidth, which enables them to carry large amounts of data. At some point in your connection to the Internet, your data will cross a fiber network. Fiber is used in backbone networks, large enterprise environments, and large data centers. The Internet backbone consists of many networks owned by numerous companies. Optical fiber trunk lines, the main core of the Internet backbone, consist of many fiber cables bundled to increase capacity or bandwidth. Older copper cabling infrastructures closer to home and businesses are increasingly being replaced with fiber. For example, in the figure, the cable connection includes a hybrid fiber coaxial, HFC, network in which fiber is used in the last mile to the user's home. At the user's home, the network switches back to copper coaxial cable. This is known as fiber to the curb, FTTC. Fiber to the premises, FTTP, brings the fiber to the customer's building. A splitter in the street cabinet has an optical line terminal, OLT. The OLT has connections for each customer being supplied in the area. The building is connected to the optical network terminal, ONT, inside the customer's building. The optical signals are converted to electrical signals and connect to a router using a standard Ethernet patch cord. The choice of connection varies depending on geographical location and service provider availability. Complete 5.1.2.3 Line of Sight Wireless Internet Service 5.1.2.3 Line of Sight Wireless Internet Service Line of Sight Wireless Internet is an always-on service that uses radio signals for transmitting Internet access, as shown in the figure. Radio signals are sent from a tower to the receiver that the customer connects to a computer or network device. A clear path between the transmission tower and customer is required. The tower may connect to other towers or directly to an Internet backbone connection. The distance the radio signal can travel and still be strong enough to provide a clear signal depends on the frequency of the signal. Lower frequency of 900 MHz can travel up to 40 miles, 65 kilometers, while a higher frequency of 5.7 GHz can only travel 2 miles, 3 kilometers. Extreme weather conditions, trees, and tall buildings can affect signal strength and performance. Incomplete 5.1.2.4 Satellite 5.1.2.4 Satellite 
Broadband satellite is an alternative for customers who cannot get cable or DSL connections. A satellite connection does not require a phone line or cable, but uses a satellite dish for two-way communication. The satellite dish transmits and receives signals to and from a satellite that relays these signals back to a service provider, as shown in the figure. Download speeds can reach up to 10 megabits per second or more, while upload speed ranges about 1-10th of download speeds. It takes time for the signal from the satellite dish to relay to your ISP through the satellite orbiting the Earth. Due to this latency, it is difficult to use time-sensitive applications such as video gaming, voice over internet protocol, VoIP, and video conferencing. A new type of satellite service has far more satellites orbiting the Earth in low Earth orbit, LEO. The service can support up to approximately 100 megabits per second with much lower latency than standard satellite. Between 100 and 200 milliseconds, the satellite dish contains a motor so that it can realign with the satellites because they move relative to the surface of the Earth. Cellular Cell phone technology relies on cell towers distributed throughout the user's coverage area to provide seamless access to cell phone services and the Internet. With the advent of the third generation, 3G, of cellular technology, smartphones could access the Internet. Download and upload speeds continue to improve with each iteration of cell phone technology. In some regions of the world, smartphones are the only way users access the Internet. In the United States, users are increasingly relying on smartphones for Internet access. According to the Pew Research Center, in 2018, 20% of adults in the United States do not use broadband at home, 28% for adults 18 to 29. Instead, they use a smartphone for personal Internet access. Search for Pew Internet Research for more interesting statistics. Incomplete file. IT Essentials Internet Connect Many cell phones provide the ability to connect other devices, as shown in the figure. Many cell phones provide 5.1.2.6 Mobile Hotspot and Tethering Many cell phones provide the ability to connect other devices, as shown in the figure. This connection, known as tethering, can be made using Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or by using a USB cable. 
Once a device is connected, it is able to use the phone's cellular connection to access the Internet. When a cellular phone allows Wi-Fi devices to connect and use the mobile data network, it is called a mobile hotspot. Incomplete 5.1.2.7 Check your understanding. Understanding Internet Connection Types 5.1.2.7 Check your understanding Internet Connection Types This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answer, select the Submit button. Match Internet Connection Type to the definition. Mobile Hotspot Cellular Fiber Satellite Broadband DSL Cable Tethering Technologies that use different frequencies to send multiple signals over the same medium. The process of connecting another device to a cell phone so that the connected device can access the Internet. Uses coaxial cables to deliver a variety of content including TV channels, internet, and voice calls. An increasingly popular choice for internet connections to homes and businesses that uses light to transfer data. A popular choice for rural markets that do not have a DSL or cable provider. Uses towers distributed throughout a user's coverage area to provide seamless access to phone and internet services. A cell phone configured to allow other devices to connect via Wi-Fi. Digital phone service that can also connect to the internet. Submit.
Scroll to begin. 5.2 Networking Protocols, Standards, and Services. Scroll to begin. Incomplete 5.2.1 Transport Layer Protocols. Complete 5.2.1.1 Video Explanation, Transport Layer Protocols. 5.2.1.1 Video Explanation, Transport Layer Protocols. Select Play to view the video. Click here to read the transcript of this video. Incomplete. Network communications involves a suite of protocols known as the Internet Protocol Suite, or more commonly known as the TCP IP Protocol Suite. This protocol suite includes all the protocols used in various aspects of end-to-end -end network communications, including addressing, routing, and reliability. The TCP IP protocol suite is also a conceptual model that classifies and organizes the various protocols into four different layers, network access, internet, transport, and application. The transport layer includes two protocols, TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, and UDP, User Datagram Protocol. These protocols determine how the data will be delivered, reliably or unreliably. It is up to the network application to choose. If the application chooses TCP, the data will be delivered reliably, with guaranteed delivery and assembled in the proper order. Or it can choose UDP when the data needs to be delivered as quickly as possible, with some tolerance for loss of data. TCP adds some overhead, which means there will be some additional delay. For example, the network application HTTP uses TCP to make sure all the data is delivered reliably. Here the user types in the URL www .mybank.example. TCP is used to transport the information reliably between the user's computer and the web server. The web server, also using TCP, sends the requested data, the web page, in separate segments. Each segment includes a sequence number so the receiver knows if anything is missing and so it can assemble it in the proper order. UDP is a simpler protocol used to send data as quickly as possible, even if some data doesn't get delivered. Network applications, such as those used for sending voice and real-time video, can sacrifice some data loss in order for the data to be delivered as quickly as possible. As you can see, UDP does not include any functions for reliability such as there are no sequence numbers in the UDP segments. To summarize, the applications such as those that perform file transfers, downloading web pages, and email, all use the reliable transport protocol TCP, whereas UDP is used for applications such as real-time video and voice, where speed is more important than reliability. Five dot two dot one dot two activity transport layer protocols matching select from lists and then submit choose whether the following statements are true or false false the transport layer has only one protocol like the internet layer false. False. Some application layer protocols use only UDP. True.
Some application layer protocols can use both TCP and UDP. UDP True Some application layer protocols use neither TCP nor UDP. False Submit Show feedback Complete 5.2.1.3 The TCP IP model 5.2.1.3 The TCP IP model the TCP IP model consists of layers that perform functions necessary to prepare data for transmission over a network. TCP IP stands for two important protocols in the model, Transmission Control Protocol, TCP, and Internet Protocol, IP. TCP is responsible for tracking all the network connections between a user's device and multiple destinations. The Internet Protocol, IP, is responsible for adding addressing so that data can be routed to the intended destination. The two protocols that operate at the transport layer are TCP and User Datagram Protocol, UDP, as shown in the figure. TCP is considered a reliable Reliable, full-featured transport layer protocol, which ensures that all of the data arrives at the destination. In contrast, UDP is a very simple transport layer protocol that does not provide for any reliability. The next figure highlights the TCP and UDP properties. Incomplete 5.2.1.4 TCP 5.2.1.4 TCP TCP transport is analogous to sending packages that are tracked from source to destination. If a shipping order is broken up into several packages, a customer can check online to see the order of the delivery. With TCP, there are three basic operations of reliability. Numbering and tracking data segments transmitted to a specific device from a specific application. Acknowledging received data. Retransmitting any unacknowledged data after a certain period of time. Click play in the figure to see how TCP segments and acknowledgements are transmitted between sender and receiver.
Incomplete 5.2.1.5 UDP 5.2.1.5 UDP UDP is similar to placing a regular, non-registered letter in the mail. The sender of the letter is not aware of the availability of the receiver to receive the letter. Nor is the post office responsible for tracking the letter or informing the sender if the letter does not arrive at the final destination. UDP provides the basic functions for delivering data segments between the appropriate applications with very little overhead and data checking. UDP is known as a best effort delivery protocol. In the context of networking, best effort delivery is referred to as unreliable because there is no acknowledgement that the data is received at the destination. Click play in the figure to see an animation of UDP segments being transmitted from sender to receiver. Receiver Incomplete 5.2.1.6 Check your understanding, transport layer protocols. Submit Which two statements apply to the transport layer protocols, TCP and UDP? Choose two. Submit Submit. Show feedback. Incomplete 5.2.2 application port numbers. Complete 5.2.2.1 video explanation application port numbers. 5.2.2.1 video explanation application port numbers. Select play to view the video. Click here to read the transcript of this video. TCP and UDP use source and destination port numbers to keep track of application conversations. Every network application is identified by the transport protocol using a well-known port number. The source port number is associated with the application that originated the request, known as the client computer. The destination port number is usually a well-known port number associated with the destination application on the remote device, the server computer. In this example, the user has entered the URL www.netacad into their web browser. The web browser is sending the information using the network application protocol HTTP, which uses the transport protocol TCP. The user's operating system has selected the TCP source port 1024 to refer to any communications coming from this specific web browser window or process. It is also using the well-known TCP destination port 80, so the www.netacad.com web server knows this data is for its HTTP application. After receiving the request from the client, 
when the www.netacad.com web server sends the client the data it has requested, it will be sent from its TCP source port 80. In other words, from its HTTP application. When sending the data to the client, the server will use the client's TCP source port as the TCP destination port. In this case, port 1024. This is so the client knows which specific application, the specific web browser window or tab, this data is intended for. If the client opens up a separate browser window, in this case, entering the URL www.cisco.com, a different TCP source port number will be associated with this specific web browser window. In this case, TCP source port 1555. Although the HTTP request message will be sent to a different server, the same well-known TCP destination port number of 80 is used to indicate this is for the HTTP application. When the www.cisco.com web server sends this specific client the data it has requested, it will be sent from its TCP source port 80, its HTTP application. The server will use the client's TCP source port as the TCP destination port, port 1555. When the client receives this information, it examines the destination port number to know which browser window the data is intended for. Five dot two dot two dot two classify application port numbers. TCP and UDP use a source and destination port number to keep track of application conversations. The source port number is associated with the originating application on the local device. The destination port number is associated with the destination application on the remote device. These are not physical ports. They are numbers that are used by TCP and UDP to identify the applications that should handle the data. The source port number is dynamically generated by the sending device. This process allows multiple conversations to occur at the same time for the same application. For example, when you use a web browser, you can have more than one tab open at a time. The destination port number is 80 for regular web traffic or 443 for secure web traffic. These are called well-known port numbers because they are consistently used by most web servers on the Internet. Source port numbers will be different for each tab open. This is how your computer knows which browser tab to deliver the web content to. Similarly, other network applications like email and file transfer have their own assigned port numbers. There are a number of different types of application layer protocols that are identified by TCP or UDP port numbers at the transport layer. The following five tables classify the protocols according to their purpose. The sixth table lists all of these application protocols in port number order. Complete 5.2.2.2 Table 0 World Wide Web Protocols Port Transport Protocol Application Protocol Description 53 TCP, UDP, DNS. The domain name service, DNS, protocol finds the IP address associated with a registered internet domain for web, email, and other internet services. 
It uses UDP for requests and information transfer between DNS servers. TCP will be used for DNS responses if required. 80. TCP. HTTP. Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP, provides a set of rules for exchanging text, graphic images, sound, video, and other multimedia files on the World Wide Web. 443. TCP, UDP, HTTPS. The browser uses encryption and authenticates your connection with web server. Port. Port. Transport protocol. Application protocol. Description. Complete 5.2.2.2 Table 1 Email and Identity Management Protocols Port Transport Protocol Application Protocol Description 25 TCP SMTP Simple Mail Transfer Protocol is used to send email from clients to an email server. It may also be used to relay email messages from source to destination email servers. 110. TCP. POP3. Post Office Protocol 3 is used by email clients to retrieve messages from an email server. 143. TCP. IMAP. Internet Message Access Protocol is used to retrieve email messages from a server. It is more advanced than POP3 and offers a number of advantages. 389. TCP, UDP. LDAP. Lightweight Directory Access Protocol is used to maintain user identity directory information that can be shared across networks and systems. It can be used to manage information about users and network resources. It can be used to authenticate users on multiple computers. Complete 5.2.2.2 Table 2 File Transport and Management Protocols Port Transport Protocol Application Protocol Description 20 TCP FTP File Transfer Protocol Used to transfer files between computers Considered insecure, SSH File Transfer Protocol, SFTP, TCP Port 22, should be used. 21. TCP. FTP. FTP uses TCP Port 21 to establish a connection between the client and FTP server. In order to start a data transfer session, 69. UDP. 
TFTP. Trivial file transfer protocol utilizes less overhead than FTP. 445. TCP. SMB slash CIFS. Server message block or common internet file system allow for sharing of files, printers, and other resources between nodes on a network. 548. TCP, UDP. AFP. Apple Filing Protocol is a proprietary protocol developed by Apple to enable file services for macOS and classic macOS. Complete 5.2.2.2 Table 3 Remote Access Protocols Port Transport Protocol Application Protocol Description 22 TCP SSH Secure Shell or Secure Socket Shell provides a strong authentication and encrypted data transport between a client and remote computer. Like Telnet, it provides a command line on the remote computer. 23. TCP Telnet Telnet is an insecure remote access protocol that provides a command line on a remote computer. SSH is preferred for security reasons. 3389 TCP, UDP, RDP Remote Desktop Protocol was developed by Microsoft to provide remote access to the graphical desktop of a remote machine. It is useful for tech support situations, however it should be used with caution because it provides a remote user with complete control of the destination computer. Complete 5.2.2.2 Table 4 Network Operations Protocols Port Transport Protocol Application Protocol Description 67 of 68 UDP DHCP Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol automatically provides IP addresses to network hosts and provides a way to manage those addresses. The DHCP server uses UDP port 67 and the client host uses UDP port 68. 137 to 139. UDP, TCP. NetBIOS, NetBT. NetBIOS over TCP IP provides a system through which older computer applications can communicate over large TCP IP networks. Different NetBT functions use different protocols and ports in this range. 161-162 UDP SNMP Simple Network Management Protocol enables network administrators to monitor network operations from centralized monitoring stations. 427 UDP TCP SLP Service Location Protocol allows computers and other devices to locate services on a LAN without previous configuration. Usually uses UDP, but can use TCP. 445 UDP, TCP SMB Server Message Block, SMB, is a client Server file sharing protocol that describes the structure of shared network resources, such as directories, files, printers, and serial ports. SMB file sharing and print services have become the mainstay of Microsoft networking. Incomplete 5.2.2.2 Table 5 Application Protocols in Port Number Order
Port number. Protocol. Application. Twenty. TCP. FTP data. Twenty one. TCP. FTP control. Twenty two. TCP. SSH. Twenty three. TCP. Telnet. Twenty five. TCP. SMTP. Fifty three. TCP UDP. DNS. Sixty seven. UDP. DHCP server. Sixty eight. UDP. DHCP client. Sixty nine. UDP. TFTP. Eighty. TCP. HTTP. One hundred and ten. TCP. Pop three. One hundred and thirty seven to one hundred and thirty nine. TCP UDP. NetBIOS NetBT. 143. TCP. IMAP. 161 slash 162. UDP. SNMP. 389. TCP UDP. LDAP. 427. TCP UDP. SLP 443 TCP UDP HTTPS 445 TCP SMB slash CIFS 548 TCP AFP 3389 TCP UDP RDP Incomplete Question 1 5.2.2.3 Check your understanding application port numbers Incomplete Question 1 Matching. Select from lists and then submit. Match application and ports to the transport layer protocol used. Used. Port 20, FTP, data.
data. TCP. Port 21 FTP control. TCP. Port 22 SSH. TCP. Port 23 Telnet. TCP Port 25 SMTP TCP Port 53 DNS Both Port 80 HTTP TCP Port 67 DHCP Server UDP Port 68 DHCP Client UDP Port 69 TFTP UDP Reset Show Feedback Incomplete Question 2 Matching Select from lists and then submit Match application and ports to the transport layer protocol used. Port 110, POP3.
5.2.3 Wireless Protocols Complete 5.2.3.1 WLAN Protocols 5.2.3.1 WLAN Protocols The Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, IEEE, standards for Wi-Fi as specified in the 802.11 Collective Group of Standards that specify the radio frequencies, speeds, and other capabilities for LANs. Various implementations of the IEEE 802.11 standards have been developed over the years, as shown in the figure. The 802.11a, 802.11b, and 802.11g standards should be considered legacy. New LANs should implement 802.11x, Wi-Fi 6, devices. Existing WLAN implementations should upgrade to 802.11x, Wi-Fi 6, when purchasing new devices. Incomplete 5.2.3.1, Table 0 IEEE Standard Maximum Speed Maximum Indoor Range Frequency Backwards Compatible 802.11a, Wi-Fi 2 54 megabits per second 115 feet, 35 meters 5 gigahertz 802.11b, Wi-Fi 1 11 megabits per second 115 feet, 35 meters 2.4 GHz 802.11G Wi-Fi 3 54 megabits per second 125 feet 38 meters 2.4 GHz 802.11B 802.11N Wi-Fi 4 600 megabits per second. 230 feet, 70 meters. 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz. 802.11 divided by B divided by G. 802.11 AC, Wi-Fi 5. 6.9 gigabits per second. 115 feet, 35 meters 5 gigahertz 802.11a slash n 802.11x Wi-Fi 6 9.6 gigabits per second 150 feet 46 meters 2.4 gigahertz 5 gigahertz 802.11a slash b slash g slash n slash ac 802.11x, Wi-Fi 6e 9.6 gigabits per second 150 feet, 46 meters 1 gigahertz, 6 gigahertz 802.11a slash b slash g slash n slash ac Incomplete 5.2.3.2 Bluetooth, NFC, and RFID 5.2.3.2 Bluetooth, NFC, and RFID Wireless protocols for close proximity connectivity include Bluetooth, radio frequency identification, RFID, and near-field communication, NFC. Bluetooth a Bluetooth device can connect up to seven other Bluetooth devices. Described in the IEEE Standard 802.15.1, Bluetooth devices operate in the 2.4 to 2.485 GHz radio frequency range and is typically used for PANS. The Bluetooth standard incorporates adaptive frequency hopping, AFH.
AFH allows signals to hop around using different frequencies within the 2.4 to 2.485 GHz range, thereby reducing the chance of interference when multiple Bluetooth devices are present. RFID RFID uses the frequencies within the 125 MHz to 960 MHz range to uniquely identify items, such as in a shipping department as shown in the figure. Active RFID tags that contain a battery can broadcast their ID up to 100 meters. Passive RFID tags rely on the RFID reader to use radio waves to activate and read the tag. Passive RFID tags are typically used for close scanning but have a range of up to 25 meters. NFC NFC uses frequency 13.56 MHz and is a subset of the RFID standards. NFC is designed to be a secure method to complete transactions. For example, a consumer pays for good or services by waving the phone near the payment system, as shown in the figure. Based on a unique ID, the payment is charged directly against a prepaid account or bank account. NFC is also used in mass transportation services, the public parking sector, and many more consumer areas. 5.2.3.3 ZigBee and Z-Wave ZigBee and Z-Wave are two smart home standards that allow users to connect multiple devices in a wireless mesh network. Typically, the devices are then managed from a smartphone app, as shown in the figure. ZigBee ZigBee uses low-power digital radios based on the IEEE 802.15.4 wireless standard for low-rate wireless personal area networks, LRWPNS, that is meant to be used by low-cost, low-speed devices. ZigBee operates within frequencies from 868 MHz to 2.4 GHz and is limited to 10 to 20 meters. ZigBee has a data rate from 40 to 250 KB slash S and can support approximately 65,000 devices. The ZigBee specification relies on a main device called a ZigBee coordinator. Tasked with managing all ZigBee client devices, the ZigBee coordinator is responsible for the creation and maintenance of the ZigBee network. Although ZigBee is an open standard, software developers must be a paid member of the ZigBee Alliance to use and contribute to the standard. Z-Wave Z-Wave technology is a proprietary standard that is now owned by Silicon Labs. However, a public version of the interoperability layer of Z-Wave was open sourced in 2016. These open-source Z-Wave standards include Z-Wave's S2 security, Z-IP for transporting Z-Wave signals over IP networks, and Z-Ware middleware. Z-Wave operates within a variety of frequencies based on the country from 865.2 MHz in India to 922 to 926 MHz in Japan. Z-Wave operates at 908.42 MHz in the North America. Z-Wave can transmit data up to 100 meters but has a slower data rate than ZigBee at 9.6 to 100 KB slash S. Z-Wave can support up to 232 devices in one wireless mesh network. Search the Internet for ZigBee and Z-Wave to learn the latest information about these two smart home standards.
a monkey. Among the technologies that help connect IoT devices and smart appliances, Zigbee and Z-Wave are the most popular. They both have pros and cons and should be leveraged after the user understands the key differences between Zigbee and Z-Wave communication protocols. This article explains how Zigbee differs from Z-Wave and their applications in IoT. IT Essentials Internet Connection, Getting Online The Smart Home Market The market for smart home products continues to grow. According to Statista.com, the number of smart homes was 34.8 million in 2018, which was a 28.4% increase from 2017. The smart home market will continue to provide economic opportunities for individuals and companies. Incomplete 5.2.3.4 Cellular Generations 5.2.3.4 Cellular Generations List of expandable sections Select each button to expand the content. Cellular technology uses a cell phone network to connect to the Internet. Performance will be limited by the capabilities of the phone and the cell tower to which it is connected. Cellular technology has evolved through multiple generations, the G in abbreviation. Select each cellular technology for a brief description. 1G per 2G The first generation 1G of cell phones were analog voice calls only. 2G introduced digital voice, conference calls, and caller ID. Speed, less than 9.6 kilobits per second. 2.5G 2.5G supports web browsing, short audio and video clips, games, and downloads of applications and ringtones. Speed, 9.6 kilobits per second to 237 kilobits per second. 3G 3G supports full motion video, streaming music, 3D gaming, and faster web browsing. Speed, 144 kilobits per second to 2 megabits per second. 3.5G 3.5G supports high-quality streaming video, high-quality video conferencing, and voice over IP, VoIP. VoIP is a technology that applies internet addressing to voice data. Speed, 400 kilobits per second to 16 megabits per second. 4G 4G supports IP-based voice, gaming services, high-quality streamed multimedia, and Internet Protocol version 6, IPv6. IPv6 is the newest version of Internet addressing. No cell phone carriers could meet the 4G speed standards when first announced in 2008. Speed, 5.8 megabits per second to 672 megabits per second. LT Long-term evolution, LTE, is a designation for a 4G technology that meets the 4G speed standards. An advanced version of LTE significantly improves the speeds while the user is moving at high speeds, such as in a car on the highway.
Speed, 50 megabits per second to 100 megabits per second when mobile, and up to 1 gigabit per second when stationary. 5G The 5G standard was ratified in June 2018 and is currently being implemented in select markets. 5G supports a wide variety of applications including augmented reality, AR, virtual reality, VR, smart homes, smart cars, and any scenario where data transfer occurs between devices. Speed, 400 megabits per second to 3 gigabits per second download, 500 megabits per second to 1.5 gigabits per second upload. 6G 6G is currently in development. As of late 2022, no standard yet exists. 6G will support even faster speeds required for AR slash VR applications, Match the wireless protocol to the description. Description 802.11 AC 5G RFID Z-Wave 802.11 G LT Bluetooth NFC Zigbee A cellular technology that supports speeds of up to 3 gigabits per second download and 1.5 gigabits per second upload. A legacy WLAN standard with a maximum speed of 54 megabits per second. A technology that meets the standards for fourth-generation mobile phones. A tag and reader system can accommodate ranges from 25 meters for passive tags and up to 100 meters for active tags. The standard that all WLAN should use when implementing new devices. A smart home standard with some open source code that uses IEEE 802.15.4. A proprietary smart home standard that can support up to 232 connected devices in the same wireless mesh network. A secure close proximity transaction system typically used for wireless payments. A wireless PAN technology that supports up to seven connected devices. Submit.
Show feedback. Incomplete 5.2.4 Network Services. Incomplete 5.2.4.1 Video Explanation Network Services. 5.2.4.1 Video Explanation Network Services. Select Play to view the video. Click here to read the transcript of this video. A client computer uses client software to request the service of a server. The server computer uses server software to provide services to one or more clients. DHCP, or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, is a network service that allows a DHCP server to provide addressing information to client computers. This DHCP client has been configured to obtain its addressing information automatically from a DHCP server. This is the default on most user computers and devices. The DHCP client sends a DHCP request message asking the DHCP server for this information. The DHCP server may be a local router or a server computer. The DHCP server will then respond with the appropriate addressing information. This will include a specific IP address for the client and can also include an address for the default gateway and a DNS server. DNS, or Domain Name System, is a network service that provides an IP address for a known domain name, such as a URL. In this example, the user has entered the URL www.netacad.com into a web browser. However, to request this information from the web server, the client needs to know the IP address of the web server. The client sends the DNS server a DNS request message asking for the IP address associated with the domain name www.netacad.com. The DNS server will determine the answer and respond to the client's request with the proper IP address. The client can now send its HTTP request to the www.netacad.com web server. HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, is a network service that provides for the delivery of worldwide web messages between a client web browser and a web server. The HTTP client using a web browser requests the information associated with a specific URL from a web server. The HTTP server or web server responds by sending the client the files associated with this specific website. This may include HTML code, images, audio, and video. Five dot two dot four dot two client server roles. All computers connected to a network that participate directly in network communication are classified as hosts. Hosts are also called end devices. Hosts on networks perform a certain role. Some of these hosts perform security tasks, while others provide web services. There are also many legacy or embedded systems that perform specific tasks such as file or print services. Hosts that provide services are called servers. Hosts that use these services are called clients. Each service requires separate server software. 
For example, a server requires web server software in order to provide web services to the network. A computer with server software can provide services simultaneously to one or many clients. Additionally, a single computer can run multiple types of server software. In a home or small business, it may be necessary for one computer to act as a file server, a web server, and an email server. File Client and Server The file server stores corporate and user files in a central location. The client devices access these files with client software such as Windows Explorer. Web Client and Server The web server runs web server software and clients use their browser software, such as Chrome or Firefox, to access web pages on the server. Email Client and Server The email server runs email server software and clients use their mail client software, such as Microsoft Outlook, to access email on the server. An example of a LAN with these clients and servers is shown in the figure. Incomplete 5.2. Five point two point four point three DHCP server. Five point two point four point three DHCP server. A host needs IP address information before it can send data on the network. Two important IP address services are Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol (DHCP) and Domain Name Service (DNS). DHCP is the service used by ISPs, network administrators, and wireless routers to automatically assign IP addressing information to hosts, as shown in the figure. Incomplete DHCP operation Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, DHCP, works in a client-server mode where DHCP clients request available IP configurations from a DHCP server. A DHCP server is configured with a scope, i.e., a pool or a range of addresses that it can lease to requesting DHCP clients. Note, the DHCP server can be a dedicated server or a router configured to provide DHCP services. The DHCP scope should not include manually assigned or reserved IP addresses such as the default gateway address, switch management address, printer address, and more. As shown in the figure, when the DHCP client boots or otherwise wants to join a network, it initiates the following four-step process to obtain a lease. DHCP four-step process to obtain a lease. The DHCP client broadcasts Broadcasts a DHCP DSCOVR message to request an IP configuration from a DHCP server. The DHCP server chooses an available IP configuration from its configured scope and sends a DICPA for unicast message to the client MAC address. The IP configuration can contain the IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, DNS servers, and the period of time i.e., the lease, that the host can use the IP configuration. The client then officially requests the IP configuration by sending a broadcast to request message to the DHCP server. The server removes the IP configuration from its pool of available IP configurations and sends a unicast acknowledgement DICPAC, to the DHCP client to confirm that it can use the address until the lease expires. Note, 
DHCP messages are sent using UDP port 67, server, and UDP port 68, clients. DHCP servers listen for client messages on UDP port 67 and DHCP clients listen for messages from servers on UDP port 68. The figure displays the DHCP process in Wireshark. Incomplete DHCP process captured by Wireshark. Once a client receives the DIC pack from the server, it sends out an ARP message to the provided IP address to make sure it is not already assigned on the network. ARP, Address Resolution Protocol, is a network protocol to discover the MAC address of a device using an IP address. If there is no response to the ARP request, then the host can use the IP configuration. If the host receives an ARP reply, then it restarts the DHCP process to obtain a different IP configuration. DHCP means the client must contact the DHCP server periodically to extend the lease. This lease mechanism ensures that moved or power-off clients do not keep addresses that they no longer need. When a lease expires, the DHCP server returns the address to the pool where it can be reallocated as necessary. DHCP Address Renewal Process DHCP reservations It is also possible to ensure that some hosts, such as servers and printers, are always assigned the same IP address when they connect. To do so, a DHCP server is configured with a reserved list of IP addresses based on the requesting DHCP client's MAC address. Therefore, when a host sends a DHCP DSCOVR message, the DHCP server looks in its DHCP reserved address list for a matching MAC address. If it finds a match, then it sends a DIC buffer with the reserved IP address. Incomplete 5.2.4.4 DNS Server 5.2.4.4 DNS Server a tabbed content container. Content can be text, graphic, or both. DNS is the method computers use to translate domain names into IP addresses. On the internet, domain names, such as http colon slash slash www.cisco.com, are much easier for people to remember than 198.133.219.25, which is the actual numeric IP address for this server. If Cisco decides to change the numeric IP address of www.cisco.com, it is transparent to the user because the domain name remains the same. The new address is simply linked to the existing domain name and connectivity is maintained. Select each tab for a description and topology of each step in the DNS resolution process. Step 1. Step 1 Step 2 Step 3 Step 4 Step 5 Incomplete DNS records DNS records When a client does not know the IP address of a web domain or email domain name, it sends a domain name system DNS query to the DNS server identified in its Internet Protocol IP configuration. The DNS query may ask the DNS server, What is the IPv4 address for the xyz.com domain name? What is the IPv6 address for the xyz.com domain name? What is the IP address for emails forwarded to the xyz.com domain name? Do you have additional information about the xyz.com email domain? To answer these types of questions, a DNS server keeps a list of domain names and IP addresses information in resource records, RRs. This list of RRs is stored on a DNS server in a DNS zone database. 
When the server receives a DNS name query, it looks in its zone database for a matching RR to resolve the query. If it finds a match, it replies to the requesting host with the RR information. If there is no match, then it queries a higher level DNS server. There are many types of DNS RRs. Some common types include RR Description A An address, A, record is used to resolve a domain name to an IPv4 address. Quad A This RR is used to resolve a domain name to an IPv6 address. MX a mail exchange, MX, resource record identifies one or more email exchange servers that are responsible for accepting email messages on behalf of a domain name. MX records include a priority value, lowest integer is preferred, when multiple email servers are available for redundancy. TXT a text, txt, records is used to provide textual information about a host, server, network, and more. Useful to identify legitimate email servers from spam generating servers. Incomplete 5.2.4.4 Spam Management the DNS service is commonly abused by threat actors to assist in their spam email campaigns. For this reason, DNS servers now implement the following anti-spam security features using TXT resource records. DNS spam management feature Description Sender policy framework, SPF The SPF is a special TXT resource record that identifies SMTP email servers authorized to send emails for an organization. The RR includes the IP address and email server domain name that receiving servers use to determine legitimacy of emails. There can only be one SPF RR per domain. The SPF can also indicate how to process unknown servers including rejecting them, flagging them, or accepting them. Domain Keys Identified Mail, DKIM DKIM is more advanced than SPF because it leverages cryptographic authentication using digital signatures instead of a list of authorized SMTP servers. The TXTRR contains the public encryption key of the sending domain that external email servers use to validate the authenticity of the sending email server. DKIM can replace or be used with SPF. Domain-based message authentication, reporting, and conformance, DMARC. DMARC is a TXT RR that further enhances SPF and DKIM. It specifies additional policy information for non-compliant SPF and KIM DNS queries. Incomplete 5.2.4.5 Print Server 5.2.4.5 Print Server Print servers enable multiple computer users to access a single printer. A print server has three functions. Provide client access to print resources. Administer print jobs by storing them in a queue until the print device is ready for them and then feeding or spooling the print information to the printer. Provide feedback to users. Incomplete 5.2.4.6 File Server 5.2.4.6 File Server The File Transfer Protocol, FTP, provides the ability to transfer files between a client and a server. An FTP client is an application that runs on a computer that is used to push and pull files from a server running FTP as a service. 
As the figure illustrates, to successfully transfer files, FTP requires two connections between the client and the server, one for commands and replies, the other for the actual file transfer. FTP has many security weaknesses. Therefore, a more secure file transfer services should be used, such as one of the following. File Transfer Protocol Secure, FTPS, an FTP client can request the file transfer session be encrypted. The file server can accept or deny the request. SSH File Transfer Protocol, SFTP, as an extension to secure shell, SSH, protocol, SFTP can be used to establish a secure file transfer session. Secure Copy, SCP, SCP also uses SSH to secure file transfers. Incomplete 5.2.4.7 Web Server 5.2.4.7 Web Server Web resources are provided by a web server. The host accesses the web resources using the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP, or the Secure HTTP, HTTPS. HTTP is a set of rules for exchanging text, graphic images, sound, and video on the World Wide Web. HTTPS adds encryption and authentication services using Secure Sockets Layer, SSL, protocol or the newer Transport Layer Security, TLS, protocol. HTTP operates on port 80. HTTPS operates on port 443. To better understand how the web browser and web server interact, we can examine how a web page is opened in a browser. For this example, use the http colon slash slash www.cisco.com slash index.html URL. First, as shown in the figure, the browser interprets the three parts of the URL. HTTP, the protocol or scheme. www.cisco.com, the server name. Index.html, the specific file name requested. The browser then checks with the domain name server, DNS, to convert www.cisco.com into a numeric address, which it uses to connect to the server. Using HTTP requirements, the browser sends a GET request to the server and asks for the index.html file, as shown in the next figure. Figure the server sends the HTML code for this web page back to the client's browser, as shown in the next figure. As shown in the final figure, the browser interprets the HTML code and formats the page for the browser window. Incomplete 5.2.4.8 Mail Server 5.2.4.8 Mail Server Email requires several applications and services, as shown in the figure. Email is a store and forward method of sending, storing, and retrieving electronic messages across a network. Email messages are stored in databases on mail servers. Email clients communicate with mail servers to send and receive email. Mail servers communicate with other mail servers to transport messages from one domain to another. An email client does not communicate directly with another email client when sending email. Instead, both clients rely on the mail server to transport messages. Email supports three separate protocols for operation, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, SMTP, Post Office Protocol, POP, and Internet Message Access Protocol, IMAP. The application layer process that sends mail uses SMTP. 
A client retrieves email using one of the two application layer protocols, POP or IMAP. Incomplete 5.2.4.9 Proxy Server 5.2.4.9 Proxy Server Proxy servers have the authority to act as another computer. A popular use for proxy servers is to act as storage or cache for web pages that are frequently accessed by devices on the internal network. For example, the proxy server in the figure is storing the web pages for www.cisco.com. When any internal host sends an HTTP GET request to www.cisco.com, the proxy server completes the following steps. It intercepts the requests. It checks to see if the website content has changed. If not, the proxy server responds to host with the web page. In addition, a proxy server can effectively hide the IP addresses of internal hosts because all requests going out to the Internet are sourced from the proxy server's IP address. Complete 5.2.4.10 Authentication Server 5.2.4.10 Authentication Server Access to network devices is typically controlled through authentication, authorization, and accounting services. Referred to as AAA or AAA, these services provide the primary framework to set up access control on a network device. AAA is a way to control who is permitted to access a network, authenticate what they can do while they are there, authorize, and track what actions they perform while accessing the network, accounting. In the figure, the remote client goes through a four-step process to authenticate with a AAA server and gain access to the network. Incomplete 5.2.4 5.2.4.11 Syslog Server 5.2.4.11 Syslog Server Many networking devices support Syslog, including routers, switches, application servers, firewalls, and other network appliances. The Syslog protocol allows networking devices to send their system messages across the network to Syslog servers. The Syslog logging service provides three primary functions. The ability to gather logging information for monitoring and troubleshooting. The ability to select the type of logging information that is captured. The ability to specify the destinations of captured Syslog messages. Incomplete 5.2.4.12 Load Balancer 5.2.4.12 Load Balancer Some network servers can experience very heavy loads. Some examples include streaming media servers, web servers, and email servers. Often, multiple servers are providing one service in order to provide timely content. A load balancer can be used to distribute the demand of requests. It is placed in front of the servers to ensure each server is being used as much as the others. This prevents things like network timeouts and slow responses. Complete 5.2.4.13 SCADA 5.2.4.13 SCADA a supervisory control and data acquisition SCADA, system is used in an industrial control system ICS. This type of system provides automation for critical services such as national security, water treatment plants, or power suppliers. 
SCADA software runs on a computer to gather data from the devices used by the ICS. The SCADA manages the devices remotely typically through the use of satellite or cellular communications. Incomplete 5.2.4.14 Check your understanding, network services. 5.2.4.14 Check your understanding, network services. This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answer, select the Submit button. Match network server to the description. Mail. Web. DNS. Proxy. File. Syslog. DHCP. Authentication. Translates a domain name, such as cisco.com, to an IP address. Provides a method for storing system messages from networking devices. Uses protocols such as SMTP and POP3 to send and receive messages. Uses protocols such as FTPS, SFTP, and SCP. Typically uses a AAA server. Provides the ability to cache web pages for quick access. Provides IP addresses to hosts on the network. Uses protocols such as HTTP and HTTPS to display information in a browser. Browser. Reset. Show feedback. Home. Five point three network devices. Scroll to begin. Incomplete 5.3.1 Basic Network Devices Five dot three dot one dot one video explanation basic network devices. Select play to view the video. Click here to read the transcript of this video. Ethernet switches connect devices such as computers printers, and routers, which are on the same Ethernet local area network. Devices on an Ethernet LAN communicate with each other using Ethernet MAC addresses. The MAC addresses in this video have been shortened for brevity. These MAC addresses are embedded on the device's Ethernet NIC, Network Interface Card. For example, when PCA sends data to Server B, it does so by sending that message to the server's Ethernet MAC address, CCCC. When a switch receives a message, it examines the destination MAC address in the message to determine which port to forward the data. 
It is important to note that devices also use IP addresses to communicate. IP addresses are used by devices to communicate with each other on the same network, but are also used so they can communicate with one another when they are on different networks. So switches forward data within the same network, while routers forward data between different networks. In this example, PCA is sending a message to server B, which is on a different network. This message, known as an IP packet, is sent to the local router, PCA's default gateway. When the router receives this message, it will examine the packet's destination IP address to determine where to forward the data. Routers have routing tables, which tell them where to forward packets. If the IP address of the destination device, server B in this example, is not on a network directly connected to this router, it will forward the packet to another router. If the IP address of the destination device is on a directly connected network, it can then forward the message directly to that device. Five dot three dot one dot two network interface card. A network interface card, NIC, provides the physical connection to the network at the PC or other end device. As shown in the figure, there are different types of NICs. Ethernet NICs are used to connect to Ethernet networks and wireless NICs are used to connect to 802.11 wireless networks. Most NICs in desktop computers are integrated into the motherboard or connected to an expansion slot. NICs are also available in a USB form factor. A NIC also performs the important function of addressing data with the NIC's Media Access Control, MAC, address and sending the data out as bits on the network. NICs found on most computers today are gigabit Ethernet, 1000 megabits per second, capable. Note, today's computers and motherboards typically have NICs built in including wireless capability. Refer to the manufacturer's specifications for more information. A tabbed content container. Content can be text, graphic, or both. Select each tab for a picture of different types of NICs. Ethernet NIC. Wireless NIC. USB NIC 5.3.1.3 Repeaters, Bridges, and Hubs In the early days of networking, solutions like using repeaters, hubs, and bridges were created to add more devices to the network. Repeater Regenerating weak signals is the primary purpose of a repeater, as shown in the figure. Repeaters are also called extenders because they extend the distance a signal can travel. In today's networks, repeaters are most often used to regenerate signals in fiber optic cables. Also, every networking device that receives and sends data regenerates the signal. Signal Hub. Hubs, shown in the next figure, receive data on one port and then send it out to all other ports. A hub extends the reach of a network because it regenerates the electrical signal. Hubs can also connect to another networking device, such as a switch or router, which connects to other sections of the network. Hubs are legacy devices and should not be used in today's networks. Hubs do not segment network traffic. 
When one device sends traffic, the hub floods that traffic to all other devices connected to the hub. The devices are sharing the bandwidth. Band up. Hubs shown in the bridge. Bridges were introduced to divide lands into segments. Bridges keep a record of all the devices on each segment. A bridge can then filter network traffic between LAN segments. This helps reduce the amount of traffic between devices. For example, in the next figure, if PCA needs to send a job to the printer, the traffic will not be forward to segment 2. However, the server will also receive this print job traffic. Five dot three dot one dot four switches. Bridges and hubs are now considered legacy devices because of the benefits and low cost of switches. As shown in the figure below, a switch microsegments a LAN. Microsegmenting means that switches filter and segment network traffic by sending data only to the device to which it is sent. This provides higher dedicated bandwidth to each device on the network. When PCA sends a job to the printer, only the printer receives the traffic. Both switches and legacy bridges perform microsegmentation, however, switches perform this filtering and forwarding operation in hardware and also include additional features. Switch Operation Every device on a network has a unique media access control MAC, address. This address is hard-coded by the manufacturer of the NIC. As devices send data, switches enter the device's MAC address into a switching table that records the MAC address for each device connected to the switch and records which switch port can be used to reach a device with a given MAC address. When traffic arrives that is destined for a particular MAC address, the switch uses the switching table to determine which port to use to reach the MAC address. The traffic is forwarded out the port to the destination. By sending traffic out of only one port to the destination, other ports are not affected. Managed and unmanaged switches In larger networks, network administrators typically install managed switches. Managed switches come with additional features that the network administrator can configure to improve the functionality and security of the network. For example, a managed switch can be configured with LANs and port security. In a home or small business network, you probably do not need the added complexity and expense of a managed switch. Instead, you might consider installing an unmanaged switch. These switches typically have no management interface. You simply plug them into the network and attach network devices to benefit from a switch microsegmentation features. Incomplete 5.3.1.5 Wireless Access Points 5.3.1.5 Wireless Access Points Wireless Access Points, APs, shown in the figure, provide network access to wireless devices, such as laptops and tablets. The wireless AP uses radio waves to communicate with the wireless NIC in the devices and other wireless access points. An access point has a limited range of coverage. Large networks require several access points to provide adequate wireless coverage. A wireless access point provides connectivity only to the network, while a wireless router provides additional features.
Incomplete 5.3.1.6 Routers 5.3.1.6 Routers Switches and wireless APs forward data within a network segment. Routers can have all the functionality of a switch or a wireless AP. However, routers connect networks, as shown in the figure. Switches use MAC addresses to forward traffic within a single network. Routers use IP addresses to forward traffic to other networks. In larger networks, routers connect to switches, which then connect to LANs, like the router on the right in the figure. The router serves as the gateway to outside networks. The router on the left in the figure is also known as a multipurpose device or integrated router. It includes a switch and a wireless access point. For some networks, it is more convenient to purchase and configure one device that serves all your needs than to purchase a separate device for each function. This is especially true for the home or small office. Multipurpose devices may also include a modem for connecting to the Internet. Incomplete 5.3.1.7 Check Your Understanding Basic Network Devices 5.3.1.7 Check Your Understanding Basic Network Devices This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answer, select the Submit button. Match network device to the characteristic. Repeater Hub Bridge Wireless AP Router Switch NIC A device that connects networks and forwards data based on the IP address. A legacy device that extended the number of devices that could be connected to the LAN. A legacy device that was used to divide a LAN into segments. Connects end devices to the network. Regenerates weak network signals. A device that uses radio waves to extend the distance of a network. A device that microsegments a LAN and forwards data based on the MAC address. Submit.
5.3.2 Security Devices Complete 5.3.2.1 Video Explanation Security Devices 5.3.2.1 Video Explanation Security Devices Select Play to view the video. Click here to read the transcript of this video. A firewall is a network security device or software within a device that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on a predetermined set of security rules. An integrated router typically contains a switch, a router, and a firewall. The firewall acts as a barrier between a trusted internal network and an untrusted external network such as the internet. Firewalls use various devices to enforce a predetermined set of security rules. This may include one or more access control lists, ACLs, used to determine what type of traffic will be permitted or denied. Two other types of security devices are intrusion detection systems, IDSs, and intrusion prevention systems, IPSs. An IDS passively monitors traffic on the network, comparing the captured traffic stream with known malicious signatures. An IPS actively monitors traffic before reaching the destination. If the data is acceptable, the traffic is permitted. If the data is unacceptable, then the traffic will be denied. Five dot three dot two dot two firewalls. An integrated router typically contains a switch, a router, and a firewall, as shown in the figure. Firewalls protect data and equipment on a network from unauthorized access. A firewall resides between two or more networks. It does not use the resources of the computers it is protecting, so there is no impact on processing performance. Firewalls use various techniques for determining what is permitted or denied access to a network segment, such as an access control list, ACL. This list is a file that the router uses which contains rules about data traffic between networks. Note, on a secure network, if computer performance is not an issue, enable the internal operating system firewall for additional security. For example, in Windows 10 the firewall is called Windows Defender Firewall. Some applications might not operate properly unless the firewall is configured correctly for them. Incomplete 5.3.2.3 IDS and IP. Complete 5.3.2.3 IDS and IPS. 5.3.2.3 IDS and IPS. Intrusion detection systems, IDSs, passively monitor traffic on the network. Standalone IDS systems have largely disappeared in favor of intrusion prevention systems, IPSs. But the detection feature of an IDS is still part of any IPS implementation. The figure shows that an IDS-enabled device copies the traffic stream and analyzes the copied traffic rather than the actual forwarded packets. Working offline, it compares the captured traffic stream with known malicious signatures, similar to software that checks for viruses.
viruses. An IPS builds upon IDS technology. However, an IPS device is implemented in inline mode. This means that all inbound and outbound traffic must flow through it for processing. As shown in the next figure, an IPS does not allow packets to enter the target system without first being analyzed. The biggest difference between IDS and IPS is that an IPS responds immediately and does not allow any malicious traffic to pass, whereas an IDS allows malicious traffic to pass before it is addressed. However, a poorly configured IPS can negatively affect the flow of traffic in the network. Incomplete 5.3.2.4 UTMs 5.3.2.4 UTMs Unified Threat Management, UTM, is a generic name for an all-in-one security appliance. UTMs include all the functionality of an IDS-IPS as well as stateful firewall services. Stateful firewalls provide stateful packet filtering by using connection information maintained in a state table. A stateful firewall tracks each connection by logging the source and destination addresses, as well as source and destination port numbers. In addition to IDS-IPS and stateful firewall services, UTMs also typically provide additional security services such as Zero Day Protection Denial of Service, DOS, and Distributed Denial of Service, DDoS, Protection Proxy Filtering of Applications Email Filtering for Spam and Phishing Attacks Enter Spyware Network Access Control VPN Services these features can vary significantly depending on the UTM vendor. In the firewall market today, UTMs are now typically called next-generation firewalls. For example, the Cisco Adaptive Security Appliance in the figure offers the latest in next-generation firewall features. Incomplete 5.3.2.5 Endpoint Management Server 5.3.2.5 Endpoint Management Server An endpoint management server is typically responsible for monitoring all the end devices in your network including desktops, laptops, servers, tablets, and any device connected to your network. An endpoint management server can restrict an end device's connection to the network if the device does not meet certain predetermined requirements. For example, it can verify the device's has the latest operating system and antivirus updates. Cisco's Digital Network Architecture, DNA, Center is an example of a solution that provides endpoint management. However, Cisco DNA is much more. It is a comprehensive management solution for managing all devices connected to the network so that the network administrator can optimize network performance to deliver the best possible user and application experience. The tools for managing the network are available for the Cisco DNA Center interface, as shown in the figure. Incomplete 5.3 Complete 5.3.2.5 Endpoint Management Server 5 5.3.2.6 Spam Management 
The DNS service is commonly abused by threat actors to assist in their spam email campaigns. For this reason, DNS servers now use TXT resource records to implement the anti-spam security features detailed in the table. DNS Spam Management Feature Description Sender Policy Framework, SPF The SPF is a special TXT resource record that identifies SMTP email servers authorized to send emails for an organization. The RR includes the IP address and email server domain name that receiving servers use to determine legitimacy of emails. There can only be one SPF RR per domain. The SPF can also indicate how to process unknown servers including rejecting them, flagging them, or accepting them. Domain Keys Identified Mail, DKIM DKIM is more advanced than SPF because it leverages cryptographic authentication using digital signatures instead of a list of authorized SMTP servers. The DNS service is commonly abused by threat act. DNS description. The TXTRR contains the public encryption key of the sending domain that external email servers use to validate the authenticity of the sending email server. DKIM can replace or be used with SPF. Domain-based message authentication, reporting, and conformance, DMARC. DMARC is a TXT RR that further enhances SPF and DKIM. It specifies additional policy information for non-compliant SPF and KIM DNS queries. Incomplete 5.3.2.7 Check your understanding, security devices. 5.3.2.7 Check your understanding, security devices. This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answer, select the submit button. Match security device to the characteristic. IPS. Endpoint management server. Firewall, IDS, UTM. A device that offers stateful packet inspection along with other advanced features. A device that is installed in line on the network to evaluate traffic before forwarding it to the destination. A device that centralizes the view of all devices in the network so that administrators can manage them from one interface. A device that copies traffic and forwards to a management station for evaluation. A device placed between an internal and external network to filter traffic based on rules defined in an ACL. Submit. Incomplete 5.3.3 Other Network Devices Five point three point three Other Network Devices 
Complete 5.3.3.1 Legacy and Embedded Systems 5.3.3.1 Legacy and Embedded Systems Legacy systems are those computer and networking systems that are no longer supported but are still in operation in today's networks. Legacy systems range from industrial control systems, ICSs, to computer mainframe systems, and a wide variety of networking devices such as hubs and bridges. Legacy systems are inherently vulnerable to security breaches because they cannot be upgraded or patched. One solution to alleviate some of the security risk is to air gap these systems. Air gapping is the process of physically isolating legacy systems from other networks and particularly the Internet. Embedded systems are related to legacy systems in that many legacy systems have embedded microchips. These embedded microchips are typically programmed to provide dedicated input and output instructions to a specialized device. Examples of embedded systems in the home are things such as a thermostat, refrigerator, cooking range, dishwasher, washing machine, video game consoles, and smart TVs. Embedded systems are increasingly becoming connected to the Internet. Security should be top of mind when the technician recommends and installs embedded systems. Systems Incomplete 5.3.3.2 Patch Panel 5.3.3.2 Patch Panel a patch panel is commonly used as a place to collect incoming cable runs from the various networking devices throughout a facility, as shown in the figure. It provides a connection point between PCs and the switches or routers. A patch panel can be unpowered or powered. A powered patch panel can regenerate weak signals before sending them on to the next device. For safety, ensure that all cables are secured using cable ties or cable management products and are not crossing walkways or running under desks where they can be kicked. Incomplete 5.3.3.3 Power over Ethernet and Ethernet over Power 5.3.3.3 Power over Ethernet and Ethernet over Power Power over Ethernet, PO, is a method for powering devices that do not have a battery or access to a power outlet. For example, a PO switch, such as the one shown in the figure, transfers small amounts of DC current over an Ethernet cable, along with the data, to power PO devices. Low voltage devices that support PO, such as wireless access points, surveillance video devices, and IP phones, can be powered from remote locations. Devices that support PO can receive power over an Ethernet connection at distances up to 330 feet, 100 meters away. PO devices like PO switches, PO injectors, IP cameras, voice over IP, VoIP, phones, and wireless access points, WAPs, are the top five most popular devices. Power can also be inserted in the middle of a cable run using a PO injector, as shown in the next figure. There are several IEEE standards for PO. 802.3 AF can supply up to 13 watts as 350 milliamperes at 48 volts. 802.3 at PO Plus can supply up to 25 watts as 600 milliamperes. 802.3 BT PO Plus Plus or 4 PPE can supply 51 watts type 3 or 73 watts type 4. Four. Ethernet over power, or more commonly called power line networking, uses existing electrical wiring to connect devices, as shown in the next figure. 
The concept of no new wires means the ability to connect a device to the network wherever there is an electrical outlet. This saves the cost of installing data cables and without any additional cost to the electrical bill. Using the same wiring that delivers electricity, Powerline Networking sends information by sending data on certain frequencies. Figure 3 is of a Powerline Networking adapter plugged into an electrical outlet. Incomplete 5.3.3.4 Cloud-Based Network Controller 5.3.3.4 Cloud-Based Network Controller A cloud-based network controller is a device in the cloud that allows network administrators to manage network devices. For example, a medium-sized company with multiple locations might have hundreds of wireless APs. Managing these devices can be cumbersome without using some type of controller. For example, Cisco Meraki provides cloud-based networking that centralizes the management, visibility, and control of all Meraki devices into one dashboard interface, as shown in the figure. The network administrator is able to manage the wireless devices in multiple locations with the click of a mouse button. Incomplete 5.3.3.5 Check Your Understanding Other Network Devices Five point three point three point five Check Your Understanding Other Network Devices This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answer, select the Submit button. Match the term to the respective description. Legacy Ethernet over power Cloud-based network controller Patch panel Power over Ethernet Embedded Sending data down power lines to network devices Sending low-voltage electricity down a network cable to power devices. A device that allows administrators to remotely manage many devices through one dashboard interface. Collection point for cable runs from networking devices. Special purpose microchips that are programmed to carry out specific functions. A system that no longer be upgraded or patched. Submit. 5.3.3.5 Check your understanding, other network devices. 5.4 Network Cables. Scroll to begin. Incomplete 5.4.1 Network Tools. Incomplete 5.4.1.1 Video Explanation, Network Cable Tools 5.4.1.1 Video Explanation, Network Cable Tools Select Play to view the video. Click here to read the transcript of this video.
Hello everyone! We know that computers and laptops and mobile devices are great devices to work on and deploy. But all these devices are becoming reliant on network connections. As you journey further on becoming an IT professional, you have to build up your networking skills and start building a networking toolkit. I'm here to show you some of the popular items that you may find in a toolkit for network technicians. To start, we want to have a network cable crimper. We want to have wire strippers. We want to have cable connectors. Also, it would be nice to have a punch-down tool. We'll talk about these extra two items in just a little bit. Now, this cable crimper allows you to terminate both network cables and phone cables. We're going to be utilizing connectors with this, and these connectors can be bought in bulk, and they're used on the eight copper wires of a network cable. We use them in order to terminate the cable and make the network cables usable by devices. These wire strippers here, they're used to strip the outer sheath off the network and phone wires. And once those wires are exposed, we could then utilize these connectors. A punch down tool is used to terminate a network cable that is eight raw copper wires into a punch down block. A punch down block is a common item that you'll find in an enterprise network. The punch down block has slots for each of the eight wires to be punched into the slots. And the nice thing about this tool as it punches those eight wires down into the network block itself, we can see that it has a cut side. It will cut off any excess network cable wire off of the punch block. Now, when we're working with current terminated and deployed network cabling, it's very important to have a basic network cable tester. With this network cable tester here, we can plug both ends of a network cable into the tester and this allows us to verify that the cable is of good quality and that all eight pins are terminated properly. Now there's a variety of different types of testers. I prefer the ones with LCD screens. Some also have LED lights instead. The ones with the LCD screen can easily show you exactly which pin is experiencing issues. These tools can be very basic or very advanced. This one, for example, can use DHCP, ping, and even test power over ethernet. Other tools that exist can help you trace a network cable and find the device or panel it's connected to. This is called a Tonin probe. You use this in order to locate network cables that could be part of a huge bunch or even just a cable that's a very long run. This is called a probe because it's able to pick up the tone that is placed on a cable. Many different types of devices can put a tone on the wire, including this cable tester right here. When you put all these tools together in a tool bag, you're one step closer to becoming an IT professional. Five point four point one point two network tools and descriptions. Slideshow. Select the next button to progress. Select the arrows to view a picture and description of different network tools. Wire cutters. Wire cutters are used to cut wires. Also known as side cutters, these wire cutters are specifically designed to snip aluminum and copper wire. Wire strippers. Wire strippers are used to remove the insulation from wire so that it can be twisted to other wires or crimped to connectors to make a cable. Wire strippers typically come with a variety of notches for different wire gauges. Crimper A crimper is used to attach connectors to wires. The crimper tool shown here can attach RJ45 connectors to networking cables used for Ethernet and RJ11 connectors to telephone cables used for landlines. Punch down tool. A punch down tool is used to terminate wire into termination blocks. Multimeter. A multimeter is a device that can take many types of measurements. It measures AC, DC voltage, electric current, and other electrical characteristics to test the integrity of circuits and the quality of electricity in computer components. Cable Tester A cable tester is used to check for wiring shorts, faults, or wires connected to the wrong pins. Incomplete 5.4 Loopback Adapter 
A loopback adapter, also called a loopback plug, tests the basic functionality of computer ports. The adapter is specific to the port that you want to test. In networking, a loopback plug can be inserted in a computer NIC to test the send and receive functionality of the port. Tone Generator and Probe The Tone Generator and Probe is a two-part tool used to trace the remote end of a cable for testing and troubleshooting. The Tone Generator applies a tone to the wire to be tested. On the remote end, the probe is used to identify the test wire. When the probe is in near proximity to the cable to which the toner is attached, the tone can be heard through a speaker in the probe. Wi-Fi Analyzer Wi-Fi analyzers are mobile tools for auditing and troubleshooting wireless networks. Many Wi-Fi analyzers, like the Cisco Spectrum Expert Wi-Fi application, are robust tools designed for enterprise network planning, security, compliance, and maintenance. But Wi-Fi analyzers can also be used for smaller, wireless LANs. Technicians can see all available wireless networks in a given area, determine signal strengths, and position access points to adjust wireless coverage. Some Wi-Fi analyzers can help troubleshoot a wireless network by detecting misconfigurations, access point failures, and radio frequency interference RFI, problems. Incomplete 5.4.1.3 Network Taps 5.4.1.3 Network Taps Sometimes it is necessary to capture network traffic to analyze it. This can often be done with software such as Wireshark. If this is not possible, a network tap can be used to capture the cable signals and send them to analyzing software. A network tap can be passive or active, powered. Passive Test Access Point Tap This type of tap is a box with network ports to carry signals in and out. Inside, an inductor or optical splitter is used to copy the signal and send it out a monitor port. The monitor port receives all the traffic from the cable. Active tap. This type of tap regenerates the signal. Due to the complexity of gigabit signaling, a passive tap is unable to be used. Also, some fiber links may become corrupt using an optical splitter, so an active tap is used instead. Network sniffing can also be completed using a special port on a network switch. This is known as a switched port analyzer, span, slash mirror port. A mirror receives a copy of the traffic that are addressed to a specific port or all other ports. Incomplete 5.4.1.4 Check Your Understanding Network Tools 5.4.1.4 Check Your Understanding Network Tools This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answers, select the Submit button. Match Network Tool to the Description Wire Cutter Loopback Adapter Cable Tester Multimeter Tone Generator and Probe Crimper Punch Down Tool Wi-Fi Analyzer Wire Stripper Checks for Wiring Shorts, Faults, and Wires Connected to the Wrong Pins Measures electrical characteristics to test the integrity of circuits. Designed to snip aluminum and copper wire. Used to trace the remote end of a cable for testing and troubleshooting. Used to attach RJ45 and RJ11 connectors to cables. Terminates wires in a termination block. Primarily used to determine signal strength so that access points can be positioned for maximum coverage. Typically come with a variety of notches for different wire gauges. 
Test the functionality of the send and receive signals on computer ports.